Want to hear something dope? The amino acid tyrosine serves as a precursor for making the neurotransmitter dopamine. What's less dope is that patients with Parkinson's disease, the dopaminergic neurons, so the cells in their brain that actually make dopamine and use it to communicate with nerve-bearing neurons, those cells start degrading and then they can't make the dopamine and they can't use that dopamine to tell other neurons what to do. We can actually give back the dopamine that the patients need, but we can't give it as dopamine. Instead, we give L-dopa or levodopa, those are the same thing. It's a precursor to dopamine. Now, if we gave dopamine itself, it couldn't get through the blood-brain barrier. But this L-dopa, the levodopa, can. And then the cells in the brain can convert that L-dopa into the dopamine. But there's a problem. When you give that L-dopa, it needs to actually get to the brain before it gets transformed into dopamine. So the enzyme AADC will actually do that conversion of the L-dopa to the dopamine. And most of that enzyme is going to be in your brain, but you also have that enzyme in various places in your body, like your intestines. So if you say you were just to swallow a pill of L-dopa, it would then get converted to dopamine in your intestines, and then it wouldn't make it to your brain, because that dopamine can't get into your brain. So L-dopa is typically given with another molecule, carbidopa. Carbidopa looks enough like levodopa that it's going to trick those enzymes that would do that conversion, that AADC. It's going to trick those into trying to convert it instead. But don't worry. That carbidopa, it can't actually get into your brain, whereas the levodopa can. So the levodopa is going to get into your brain. The carbidopa is stuck out here acting as decoy. So now their brains are then able to take up that L-dopa, convert it to dopamine. Voila dopamine in the brain. The brain cells now, when they want to send a message, they send that dopamine into the synapse, so into the space in between them and the neighboring neuron. And then on that neighboring neuron, there's going to be a receptor that's going to bind to that dopamine, and then that's going to set off some signaling stuff inside of this neuron. Now, you still have this dopamine out here, and so then this neuron, if it still has enough capacity, it can take it up, and then it can use it again and again. However, there are also enzymes that can degrade the dopamine. And so there are enzymes that can actually convert that to another molecule. And so there's another inhibitors that you might add, something like a COMT or an MAO inhibitor that can actually prevent that dopamine from getting broken down to try to increase the lifetime of the dopamine that is in their brain now. And the dopamine was coming from L-dopa. In our bodies, normally, L-dopa is made from the amino acid tyrosine, and that amino acid tyrosine is made from phenylalanine. You know,